right, with that little bit of history and context behind us, in this video, I want to talk to you about spirit versus matter from a Yoga Sutras perspective. Let's get into it. This is where we start to really take a dive in. So fasten your seatbelt. Here we go. The way I'd like to present this is um, if you're a parent, have you ever had your child ask you, mom or dad, where was I before I was born? You know, you'll be talking about your relationship like before they were ever around and they're like, well, where was I back then? And, uh, you know, what we used to tell our child when he was young is, oh, you were a star child, which is a nice romantic way of uh, just painting a happy feeling on the answer we don't know. <laughs> and so this is an important question. Before you were born, <laughs> where were you? After you die, where do you go? And let me just ask you one other question related to that now that you start to think about that one. The universe itself, did it just start 13.8 billion years ago when we had the Big Bang? Or was there something before that? Did time just start? Was that zero with time? Or was there a time before 13.8 billion years ago? Um, what happens? Is there, is there an end to the universe? I mean, to answer those questions, I'm just letting you know that is way beyond my pay scale and probably yours. And the point is, though, is that the yogis had an answer to that question. Not just who was I before I was born? Where do I go when I die? What existed 13.8? billion years ago, let's say 13.9 billion years ago before the Big Bang, the yogis have an answer. And let me tell you not what that answer is first, but let me tell you how they know it. Did they, like NASA, send uh, space shuttles up to measure cosmic microwaves and, uh, and little echoes of this? No. The Big Bang? No, they don't do, do that. Did they do advanced physics equations to figure out what happened before the Big Bang? No. They had really advanced technology. <laughs> what was that technology? Meditation. This is the whole point is that when they sat and got quiet, the theory is that what you get in touch with, and we'll talk more about meditation in the next video, but what I want to just talk about the spirit versus matter in this video. What you got in touch with is universal consciousness. Now, universal consciousness doesn't totally get it either, but it's kind of sort of close. There is a source of energy from which all things come and all things go and it's in all things. This is what we feel when we sit down and meditate. And I told you it's spirit versus matter. Just roughly for now, I'll give you another word in a second, label that under spirit. Now the matter part of it in a way, what I want to set up here is everything that doesn't last. Your body, I hate to tell you, is not going to last as much as it's awesome as many organic foods as you eat and bring up all these foods from both uh, bills from Whole Foods and um, eat organic vegan food and do yoga every day. Your body's not going to last. I think you know this, but in case that's a spoiler alert, I'm just letting you know. Um, your country will not last. It will your continent you're sitting on here will not last the sun will not last everything decays okay we know this but there is also something that always lasts and that is this universal spirit and 
Okay, you with me so far? And so there's basically the the terms I'll use here are the source of creation. I didn't say the creator. That's conflating things. Not the creator. The source of creation. You'll see why soon I don't use the word creator. And the created. You with me? So now the terms I'm going to use again are spirit and matter back to where we started. But I'd love to introduce to you the yogic terms as part of Samkhya Yoga or the Yoga Sutras path. Okay, they're mouthfuls, but it's not going to be the last time you hear them. So definitely I know some words are like, oh man, do I have to memorize the Sanskrit word? But yes, memorize these two words. Purusha, Purusha, and Prakriti. Purusha, Prakriti. Which one is which? Purusha, well, just everything we talked about so far under spirit or this universal consciousness or the source of creation, that is Purusha. The created, the material matter, that is what's left? Prakriti. Okay, so Purushan Prakriti. Now, here's where we go. And we'll get into it in coming videos. This is just my way of introducing you to this stuff. We'll take a deeper and deeper lens. You may wonder back to something I said previously, why I'm not using the word creator. And it won't be till like three or four videos from now, or maybe second or third session that it really lands why I don't say the word creator. But you may be wondering when I say universal consciousness, why I don't use the word God? Because I thought God created the universe, if that's your philosophy. And, um, the point is, one, is that in a way that's what we're getting at when we say Purusha, but it really is loaded because if you look in the dictionary, for example, of what, how God is defined, I looked it up and I was kind of going, oh my God, this is not what these people are talking about at all. The definition I found in the dictionary says, the creator of the universe, usually male, <laughs> I didn't write this, usually male, who judges right and wrong. The creator of the universe, usually male, who judges right and wrong is the definition of God. And that's just not what they're talking about. Now you might use the term God and you're talking about something different than that dictionary uh, definition. And it might be getting closer to what the yogis are talking about with this term Purusha. But see, when people start to even more like kind of new agey yoga, people start to unpack this thing called God. We tend to put a personality on it. Like God is omnipotent, you know, omnipresent God God's everywhere he knows everything and he's benevolent or she or it is benevolent um, and it judges you right or wrong I mean I might be drifting away from your belief systems there but the point is is that to really what I want to get here is just to, we don't have a word called Purusha in English so I'm trying to like in every English word I give you that I want to give you is clunky. So really my mission here is to try and find a way of when I say Purusha of giving you a insight so that can actually point to something that's not the wrong thing. So you'll see some translations that say God, but this again, it's not he, she, it. It does not have a personality. It is a source that is as I mentioned in a previous video, the first video, peacefully indifferent. And, and this has radical implications we'll get to in a couple of videos. But just know for now, it means peacefully indifferent, which is not benevolent. 
it is an indifferent force and it is an energy and to talk about whether it's male or female even for example is putting a personality on it it's like asking is electricity benevolent is it male or female electricity is an energy that is indifferent to you but it exists in the same way there is this source from which things come and go and it's actually indifferent to you and let's just bring it back to the original point then that is called purusha which will roughly equate to universal consciousness or spirit versus matter which is prakriti purusha and prakriti are the spirit and matter we'll unpack what those mean throughout the course but we can't get deep into what the yoga sutras are talking about without introducing those concepts first okay next video we'll talk more about this great nasa space science technology i'm just joking saying that it's actually a technology called meditation and i can't wait to unpack what the yoga sutras means when they say meditation or yoga in the next video.